about relinquishing that sort of control and giving it to the people doing the work and being like, hey, where do you see risk? If you don't see risk there, just drop that part of the process and all agree. Mm -hmm. If you all agree that it's not risky, then drop it. Yep. So we did all these things in our early years. So we took away anything that was non-value add. Okay, yep. Whereas I was talking to someone who used to work for us on Friday night and she was saying how she still has to document every single journal that she does. Oh, really? I trained her as a grad. <laughs> yep. I know she doesn't need to do that. Uh -huh. But she's been in the industry for eight or nine years. And now she's required to write her journals down. It's like beyond ridiculous mm -hmm. that you would have this person who does this. Hi, and welcome to another edition of Better Business, Better Life. Today, I am joined by Vina Ishwa, who is from Betterco, which is one of our um, fellow new market businesses just down the road. Welcome to the studio. Thanks for having me. Uh, absolute pleasure. Uh, so we've been having a, a bit of a chat beforehand just to get to know each other a wee bit and, and to say we're in the same area in new market, and you just run the corner from us I'm on George Street, that's right? Yes, um, just around the new market roundabout. Just as you head to Parnell. Okay, perfect. So tell us a little about what it is that you do and how did you get into business? So what we do currently is um, a bunch of things, but business advisory, accounting and tax, bunch of bookkeeping and financial control. Yep. Uh, how did we get into business or how did I get into business? Um, I always knew I wanted to be a business owner. Oh, was, okay. Um, I didn't realize that the business that I was going to be in was going to be accounting. <laughs> we'll start with accounting. <laughs> yep. Um, but yeah, I always knew it's just, I wanted to be a business owner so I could run my own business. I didn't ever know what the business was going to be. So, but you are a chartered accountant. Yeah. And so therefore you obviously chose to do that at uni and you were actually working for another accounting firm at the time, weren't you? Yeah. 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 So this is where the, the funny thing is, like, I, I remember the day I was walking down in school, I was like 14 and I was like, I need to be a chartered accountant so I can understand the financials. I don't know why. I just assumed that if you were a chartered business accountant. Business owner, you need to understand that too. Yeah. 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 So I, was, I don't know what made me think that if you understood financials, you could be a good business owner. So mm -hmm. I had just made that assumption and never asked anybody as a teenager. So that's why I did my CA. Yep. Not necessarily because I wanted to be an accountant. Okay. Um, and then the business just happened to be accounting. So tell us a little bit about how that happened because you were working for another yeah. accounting firm. And, yeah, tell us the story from, yeah, from I, there. Well, I think the thing was that when you – as an accountant, you're actually in this privileged position where you see lots of things. Yep. You see how people make money, you see how they're managing money. Um, you, and, and you see all of the different ways. And we then it kind of gave us the confidence, uh, well, it gave me the confidence to go and buy this rental property. And it was next to the property we had just bought. And so I'd never owned any property, but bought one. And then like nine months later, bought another one that was next door. I was like, oh shit, I don't want, I don't like losing money, but like I need to do something. So I was like, well, I've learned from other people to buy rental property, my clients. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, well, lots of people have little side hustles there where they can make five, 10, 20 grand. So let me do that. So it started as a little side hustle to just make 10 grand so we could net off the loss of the rental, oh, the rental property. Excellent. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and that was you and your brother together, right? Yeah, that's yep. right. So is he a CA too? No, he's not a CA. So his background is like IRD, banking, commercial, uh, yep. um, everything that's not the CA world. Right. So I had the practice experience and yeah. he had the non-practical experience. Awesome. And so a little side hustle that's supposed to make $10,000 a year, but it yeah. didn't quite finish up like that, did it? No, no. We, we ended up making about 40 k in the first year or so. Mm -hmm. um, and it was, all we did was um, just put it all back in because, you know. Yeah. It's a startup business, basically. It was well, we didn't really even think of it as a business, to be honest. Because it was a site also. Yeah. 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 So just you and he in the beginning, and tell us a little bit about how because now you've got what, twenty odd staff here in New Zealand, a whole yeah. bunch offshore as well. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's just about um snowballing, you know? Like quite often people get into business because they're good at something and yep. then it snowballs and then you just hire somebody else like you or try find somebody else like you or who has the right values. But we never had to do that because we had each other. Yeah. So we had each other and we had different skill sets. Um, all we had to focus on was hiring someone who could do some work and teaching them. Mm. Um, so that's all we just kept doing and doing and doing and doing for years. So you must have done it quite well, though, because actually hiring and teaching people can be quite tough because um, you've yeah. got all this knowledge in your head and you know how you want it done, but trying to teach that to somebody else. How do you go about doing that? I think that's the easy part, actually. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Most people might say that they wouldn't agree with you, but yeah, because yeah. process is something that I think a lot of business owners, um, they're very, very good in their own head at sort of knowing what needs to be done, but trying to articulate that to their staff, they can struggle with. 
Yeah, and I've got a saying, like businesses aren't run by people. Yep. They're run by systems and processes and the people run the systems and processes. Mm -hmm. And we've always kind of lived that way. Right. And lots of people disagree with me, but I don't think they get the fact that, yeah, I agree that people run business. They have to, you mm -hmm. need people, but you actually need the people to follow a system and process so you can teach them yep. and they can follow something. And if something goes wrong, you just go and look at the system and the process. Mm hmm and see what's wrong. So I actually think it's the easy part of business. <laughs> I think that's a really interesting, because we actually teach that in EOS in terms of, you know, it's all about systems and processes. Yeah. Um, but often people say, yeah, I don't know how to actually um, systemize that. And mm. and they want to go into huge amounts of detail and kind of it right the way down to the minute detail, which means you end up creating little robots rather than actual humans. And we yeah. don't want robots. We actually want humans who deliver the right outcomes, right? Yeah, and I think that's the hard part in accounting. Yep. So if you look at traditional accounting, there's like this big bloody checklist you have to follow. Yep. And every every partner in a firm is just as anal as the next person, right? <laughs> yep. And And it's about relinquishing that sort of control and giving it to the people doing the work and being like, hey, where do you see risk? If you don't see risk there, just drop that part of the process and all agree. Mm -hmm. If you all agree that it's not risky, then drop it. Yep. So we did all these things in our early years. So we took away anything that was non-value add. Okay, yeah. Whereas I was talking to someone who used to work for us on Friday night, and she was saying how she still has to document every single journal that she does. Oh, really? I trained her as a grad. <laughs> yep. I know she doesn't need to do that, uh -huh. but she's been in the industry for eight or nine years, and now she's required to write her journals down. It's like beyond ridiculous mm -hmm. that you would have this person who does this. Yeah. So we talk, we talk about document and simplify, and I think that's what you're talking about, isn't it? You don't need to have every single process in there. It's more about if you know you've got the right person who shares your values, you know that they're living by those values, they know what outcomes they have to achieve, yeah. and they've got the basics of the of the process, then they've got it made, right? Theoretically, yeah. <laughs> yeah? Theori yeah, yeah, I, th I think so. But they have to also buy into the vision of the business. Sure. Or the company, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's probably the... The only thing that's missed Missing. there is like, yeah. once they've got that, all that foundational stuff, they still need to believe in something. Mm. Um, and I think that's where we're lucky. Like they, they believe in like this growing business. Our team believe in this growing business and always have done. Yep. Um, and I think that's that kind of extracurricular thing that they get to do week to week that a lot of other accountants and other bookkeepers and business advisors and different, like our competitors, don't have that luxury. Yep. They're, they're already set. Yes. Or they don't it's almost like they have a legacy system, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So when you first started employing your first employees, uh, how did you find the right people? We, what did we do? It's a good question. A long time ago now, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I remember we interviewed about four or five. I remember in those days we were a startup. Yep. Like crappy office, like, you know, one or two computer each, like, like very basic. Yeah. Um, so it was, that was hard. And so I think we only had four or five people apply and we hired one it was actually, yeah, we hired one. Yep. Um, there's a funny story about it. I don't think, um, she would love me to a funny story about it. <laughs> Are you going to tease us and tell us that? No, <laughs> not tell us what it was. Anyway. Okay, good. <laughs> yeah. so we, she, I think she was 19 I think at the time. Yeah. But she was, she was traveling from Auckland city to Ori but by bus and she'd take her sandwich, have her, sa her sandwich for lunch there and work there and then bus back. She wasn't getting paid. She was just an unpaid intern. Yep. And um, I thought that was like quite awesome to see someone who was putting in their effort, yes. right? Yeah, yeah. As a 19 year old, no family here, no support base. You know, wow. that's, that's pretty awesome. Yep. And then she was working at, across or near us after that and like a second job, mm -hmm. came to us for lunch and uh, in her lunch break for the interview. And then she sprinted back. We watched her from the window. She sprinted back, took her heels off and sprinted right up Kyber Pass. And we saw her go into the office. And, I'll, and um, she was the one that we gave a job to purely because there was two things here. One we had seen about about responsibility, like yeah, getting yeah. back to where you need to be. Yep. And then the work ethic of going all the way to Oriwa. Yep. By bus and having for free. Yeah, that for is free. awesome. Yeah, that's yeah. amazing. Okay. And then as you've grown, obviously your team's got bigger and bigger and bigger. Yeah. How do you find staff these days? Like, what do you? Has the, has the process changed? Process definitely changed. Uh, like, I'm I'm always recruiting. If yep. that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Like, um, we're we're always working on our brand to make sure that we're um, we're attracting the right talent. Yep. Because 
I think that's the part that people miss a lot when they're trying to build a business. They don't understand that part of marketing is attracting talent mm -hmm. or part of recruitment is, is marketing. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> it's kind of hand in hand. Yep. So we're always doing that. Um, and then whenever we put ads out, we, we do get plenty of, of people coming in. So yep. that, that work starts before you need the people. Mm. It's funny. One of my friends, Warner, actually has like a little notepad. And whenever he meets somebody who he really likes, mm -hmm. he'll actually just make a note of them. And then he's nice. always looking for when he can potentially find a role for that person in the business. Yeah, so he's got a little, uh, maybe a bit old-fashioned, but, you know, a little notepad of people that he ex has connected with and thought, yep, these guys are really good. And then he'll yeah. go and approach them when he's ready to employ. Yeah, we used to do a similar thing. We used to have this folder oh, yeah. uh, in our HR folder and it would be like target stuff. Mm-hmm. And so people that we might have met or have sent their CV and said, hey, I would like to work for you. Um, but then we'll just put it in that folder. Yep. Um, but that's, yeah, it's low tech yeah. enough too. Yeah, we that's what it works. It yeah. and, and we'd be like, oh, you know, six months ago we hired one person, but that person was great. Go back to it. Yep. So you've done a phenomenal job. And as I said, you've won a whole bunch of awards for the New Market Business Awards, Westpac Business Awards. Um, did you always know what you wanted to do? Like you seem quite driven. You seem like, you know, you've obviously got a very good business. Have you always known what the future looks like? You've had a very clear picture from the beginning? Not in terms of business. Okay. Um, I don't think, like lots of people think that business is like the bed and end of, you know, like life in general. <laughs> yeah. It's like, no, like business sometimes is a means to an end. Yep. Right? You know, like you've got to understand why you're in business. Like I'm in business because I like working with people. I like teaching people. Um, so that fulfills that need. Mm -hmm. I'm also really good with numbers Yep. and I love money. I love making money. I love looking after it. I like understanding how it works. Like, so I've always liked that. So I get to do what I enjoy every day, Yep. but I'm never going to forget why I'm trying to make money and do all of that either. Like I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to buy freedom, like buy options, you know, like, <laughs> yep. you know, when you, you come from nothing, you, kind of have that drive you know yes you, you need more yeah <laughs> and so what is i mean the ultimate goal for you what does it look like in terms of that freedom like what would you like to do more of if you had more time i play more golf would you? Like, <laughs> yeah. i took up golf two years ago and i think that's like the it's one of my goals this year is to play more golf this summer are you part of the um the park what's it called the the group on with on par yeah. yeah i said to um mark the other day when i saw him post on linkedin i was like oh man i can't make it on the 26th because yep. i think it's this week yes we've got our own work function um, networking session this week so i can't make it but I, i'll join the next one yep perfect okay so we talk about you know doing what you love with people you love with time to pursue other passions and i think yep. that's the really important thing and i think your podcast kind of talks to that too right one life yeah it, it there isn't business life and then no. personal life when you're a business owner yeah. and in fact i, I for most most people, the probably isn't either. I think it's very much about finding what works for you, yeah. and provided you've got time to do those other things, then that's mm. that's good, right? It has to be good. I, I mean, everyone, whether you're in business or employment, is should uh, should think about one life. Yep. Like you should think about, okay, am I am I giving my whole self to work, mm -hmm. and I, am I giving my whole work self to home? Almost like yep. I always talk with my wife about what's happening at work. My wife always talks about what's happening at work with me. Yes. And, and it really helps kind of debrief with someone else who's not involved or emotionally involved in what you're doing. Mm -hmm. So lots of people leave those things at the door and then never talk about it. Mm. Um, and I guess from a work perspective or a business perspective, if my people don't tell me what's going on in their personal life, I can't be compassionate or empathetic or all of that. Like, like why have you got a resting bitch face today? Or like, you know, why are you being such a dick today? Like, you yeah. know, you don't want to, I don't want to have those thoughts, but if I knew what was going on, it would be much easier. So we, we, our team is quite transparent because we're, we don't have offices. We don't have doors. Like everyone kind of knows each other. If someone hasn't smiled all day, we will, someone will ask. Yeah. What's going on. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, has it always been plain sailing? No, never. Never is. <laughs> I don't think it ever Well, no, is, it's, it's, the reason that I ask that and I ask of all my guests is, you know, when you look at social media, it can be really easy to fall into the trap yeah, of, yeah. you know, everything's unicorns and roses and wonderful and easy. And look, you know, I just started my business and now I work on a beach in Bali and it's all really great. Yeah. <laughs> but um, personally, I haven't found that in the businesses that I've run. And I've had some great successes, but also some great failures as well. And it has not always been a, that beautiful S-curve that we get taught in university. So, yeah, yeah tell us a bit about the, the tougher times. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I always say that, like, you choose your hard. Yep. Everything is hard. There's nothing easy in life. So you choose your hard. It's whether this hard or that hard. So, I mean, business owners generally choose things that are a little bit harder. Um, I think the hardest thing for us was when we did a merger, and then within 12 months, we demerged. 
That's that, interesting. Yeah, that was probably the hardest time I've had in business. Yep. I, yeah, it was it was tough. So without going into detail, I mean, like, a, so a merger. I always say to anybody, if you're taking on board investors or you're merging and acquiring businesses, it is like a marriage, right? You've got yeah. to go into it understanding uh, what each other is like, what the values are, mm -hmm. what the long term goals are, yeah. um, and sometimes you can go into it, you know completely open and think everything is okay, and then it still doesn't work out. Yeah. So uh, can you tell us a little bit about what happened without going to specifics, of course, because mm -hmm. we don't want to get you in trouble here. But I mean, yeah. wait. So what happened? So you, you. Well, I think it was almost exactly that, right? Right. We we have the same rules it's yep. like i always teach my clients you follow a dating engaged married model mm -hmm. when you're looking at any any merger acquisition um bringing in a another equity partner whatever it is yep um so we kind of didn't really follow our own advice for long enough I, I always say a year year and a year okay or or a year six months three months so that's what dating engagement marriage <laughs> yeah yeah because yeah, yeah. you want to yep. you want to date for longer than you, as you like a lot longer than you want to be engaged for mm -hmm. um Theoretically, <laughs> <laughs> I say, I'm not sure I did that, but anyway, <laughs> yeah. um, and then you kind of want to get married really quickly if you, if you know it's right. Yeah, right? sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know the Indians would say that. I guess. <laughs> but we we did all very quickly, right? And then we were almost running before we were walking, um, and yeah, it was a bit. It was like. You know when that happens and you're in a new relationship and everything's really exciting. Yeah. Like literally everything's exciting. There's no bad things going yes. on. Yeah. Um, it was just fantastic for months and months and months. And then you go, hang on, does someone look at the numbers? Someone look at whether we're aligned strategically for this year, next year, the following year. Mm -hmm. Um, there's just a few things just weren't lining up. So um and, and just also we were uh, we were slightly younger and we had longer to go to be right or wrong in business. If we were wrong, our time would correct it itself. Yep. Um, and so some of the things that didn't align because of that, right? And we didn't really want an exit. And so we, we decided after um, 10 or 11 months to do the, do the, do a demerger. And we had to, you know, go to the board. First time I've ever sat on a board, hated it. Uh, well, loved it initially. Yep. Because it's extra responsibility and all the extra stuff. You've got a chairman. Yay. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> wank, wank. <you> know? <laughs> like, but, but sometimes you need that. And then sometimes you don't. Yep. And we, we didn't. So mm. we decided to demerge. Um, my most stressful time ever. Had a, my wife was pregnant, eight months pregnant. Had to make the call. Um, and we got it done. Yep. We got it done to the point where... I think everything was signed on like the 31st of March and on the 23rd of March, 2020, when we went into the first lockdown. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember lockdown. that very, very fondly, yes. Yeah. So we never went back to the office. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah. 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 Okay. That day, every, the 23rd of March, everyone grabbed their stuff, yep. went home. Yes. And then a week later, it was all demerged. Uh, yeah. Which is actually quite nice in some respects, isn't it? Because it's like it getting, was. getting divorced and then moving, moving countries and never seeing them again. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. It was, yeah. And then we all worked from home for four months because we had no office. Right. Yep. Okay. Which is and, fine by me because baby was born. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so obviously it worked out in the long run in terms of we've yeah. emerged now and we've moved on and both are doing whatever you love. Yeah. Um, I'm interested, your wife, does is she an entrepreneur too? No, she's, would. I, I think, I don't know if she would want me saying this, but I don't think, I don't think she loves business. <laughs> yep. Um, she loves the, she loves being a smaller pawn in a bigger, bigger ocean. Yep. Um, so she works in corporate. She's a governance advisor. Okay. She's done some cool stuff like in Parliament and yeah. she's been in council. Now she's at um, Waka Kotahi. Yep. So she she works with some cool people. Much smarter than me. I, isn't it so funny though? Because I mean, if you think about it, it sounds a bit like my, myself and my husband. So my husband's an actuary. Right. And so a bit like, a, a, you know, and I've worked in government too. But, you know, the, so the one of us is big risk taking, sort of seeing the big picture, um, you know, very happy with kind of almost flying by the seat of our pants. And yeah. then there's the other side, which is very, very, uh, measured and and risk yeah. averse and yeah yeah it's strange but it's you, you either have opposite attracts or you're both the same yeah right yeah. so we know that we're very much opposite attracts yes and we constantly learn so like recently we've implemented strengths finder gallup strengths finder oh, yes. at work. yeah and so we've done um done it at home and we were just comparing our 34 strengths together on the weekend. Oh, yeah. Which she's refused to do for months. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, refused. Mm -hmm. Even though she's done the test and we've got it. Yep. Um, and we ran through them and we're literally polar opposites. Wow. Yeah. yeah. 
but it works. But it works. Yeah. And I think that's why it works. Yes. Yeah. I completely agree. Okay. So you said you do go home and have a chat to her about business though, and she's yeah. quite happy to listen to, to your day and vice versa. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> happy? <laughs> well, happy. I think I do too much talking, so she probably <laughs> has to listen more. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> um, what's been the biggest kind of lesson that you think you've learned throughout business? Like if you had to go back to your younger self and say, hey, before you go into business, this is what I would do if I did it all over again. Yeah, I think you have to be, um, you have to understand why you're doing it for for both work purpose and, and personally. Yep. Like it can't just be about money, right? Yeah. Like you have to understand because you can start your first business and it, and it's not necessarily going to be the business that you're going to end up with. Yeah. So you got to understand why you're doing it because you might just build it and it might be a stepping stone to the ultimate thing. Mm-hmm. So you can build a business for a couple of years and then sell it. Yep. It could be the right thing to do. And if you plan that two or three years in advance, that would be the smart thing to do. Mm-hmm. So I think the uh, first thing would be to understand why, why you're doing that first business in the first place. Yep. Could be to learn. Mm. Uh, it could be to get some cash. Yep. Uh, it could be the first cash cow. Um, it could be the foundation to grow everything else. So yeah. Definitely do that. just want to ask a quick question there as well, though, because um, we often get told, you know, you've got to do the stuff that you love in your business. But yeah. often your first business or second business isn't necessarily. I yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> but it gets it gets put out there a lot, doesn't it? Yeah. Banded around a lot, you know, yeah. do you follow your passion, which yeah. is kind of interesting because my husband's a musician, really, and yeah. that's what he loves. Yeah. But that's not what he wants to, to, you know, run a business on. It's just his, No, that's right. It's his that passion. That would be the worst thing in the world. Yeah. I used to have a client who loved cars, who became a mechanic. Oh, he wasn't no. qualified. <laughs> and then he realized he hated working on other people's cars. Yeah. Well, there you go. Like, why would, you know? Yeah. Um, I don't necessarily love doing accounting, mm-hmm. but guess what? It enables me to do all the other things that I like doing. Yeah. So I'm following my passions outside of yeah. my nine to five, theoretically. I agree. Cool. Yeah. Okay. So for, work out why you're doing it, first of all. That's yep. the first step. Yep. yep. What else? Really important to get marketing right. Okay. Right. Yep. So that's why the purpose comes first. Mm-hmm. And then your marketing's a little bit easier. Hmm. If you don't know your purpose, your marketing's incredibly hard. Sure. Like really hard. Um, so get good marketing, and un- but understand what marketing is. So marketing is not a logo, <laughs> and it's not a website. Marketing is getting your brand right, understanding what brand awareness is, mm-hmm. and then coupling all of the things next to it, like social media, what's your website, what's your advertising, um, what are you sales how does that attach to it all that so understand marketing yep and then actually put some time and money into it without it you're just not going to get enough attention to attract the sales that you need to grow a business it has to be marketing it's interesting isn't it because i think that in new zealand there's a lot of um, number eight why mentality which can Mm. be good from an innovation perspective in terms of looking at different ways to do things but i also find that a lot of businesses do things themselves because they think they're kind of saving money and they don't want to spend the money but it actually can be detrimental can't it well you either pay for growth in time or money right Mm -hmm. yeah so if if you're doing it by yourself you're you're saving money, but you're just costing yourself because you're giving up money later as well and yep. you're just paying it in time. So mm. if you have the money, I would argue spend the money. Yes. Well, it's all it. about return on investment too, isn't it? I yeah. mean, I have this argument with people all the time, that, oh, but it's so expensive to do that kind of advertising. Yeah. Does it matter if it actually returns more than you actually invest into it and you feel that that, that ratio is correct? Yeah. What does it matter what it costs? Because yeah. you can buy cheap advertising, it does nothing. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But also it might just be what you need. Yes. And if it is what you need and you, you need it, you should, if you need it, you should use an expert. Mm-hmm. You shouldn't be DIYing it. <laughs> yeah. You should use someone who knows how to do it. Yep. If you want it, then maybe you could DIY it and do it in your own bloody time. Yeah. But, <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, don't yeah. maybe do it on the weekend or something. But if it's a need, get an expert. Completely agree. Okay. We also talked about um, just outside around one of the things you said that you wish you'd done earlier was to hire um, more experienced people right at the beginning, right? Yeah. Which is which is a, a chicken and egg scenario, isn't it? Because it's yeah. like actually when you're in a startup, you can't necessarily afford to employ huge expertise. But what do you think about that now? Yeah, I think it's 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 not just hiring people who have more capability, but it's hiring all the gaps. Yep. So like we went without administrative stuff for years. Mm. But like I'm saying, I reckon at least five or six years. And now I can't do without it. And I don't know how, why we ever had that mentality. Because when we were starting out, it was actually the cheapest resource <laughs> in, a, in accounting, right? Yep. Like the accountants cost more. Mm-hmm. But they produce money. That's fine. But if if we had to hire one or the other, so rather than hiring a really good accountant 
and not having administration or having administrative stuff and doing more ourselves. Mm. <laughs> we didn't do either. <laughs> and we hired in the middle. You yeah. know when you end up with these like juniors or intermediates initially, but then you, like I said before, you pay in time because you're constantly teaching them. Yep. So it would have been smarter for us to hire more senior people who could deliver work, get away without the administrative stuff mm-hmm. and go and then use that money to go and later hire administration stuff. Sure. So hire for capability and do a little bit more, but then fill the gap with that extra money that's coming in and fill it quickly because you'll piss these high <laughs> yeah. performers off. That's right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Um, I was going to ask another question. It's completely skipped my mind now. Isn't that terrible? Um, yeah, never mind. Oh, yes, not what it was. I just remembered. Sorry. It was around the – so we talked about outsourcing. So you have yeah. got – you've got local-based people and you've got outsourced people, yeah. which is definitely the way of the future, right? I mean, that's yeah. where most businesses work these days. Yeah. Um, but there was always a choice about where you go offshore to get to these various people. And we were talking outside about, you know, you can go to India, you can go to the Philippines, you can go to um, some of the African countries. There's a whole range yeah. of, of different places you can go to. What do you think is that the main difference between – I mean, the two main ones would definitely be the Philippines and India, wouldn't they? Yeah, 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 yeah. definitely. I, I think one of the things we've found over time is that it's it's not just about jurisdiction or country, right? Yep. So you can have the conversation about India and Philippines, but what, what we should be having the conversation about for businesses that are looking to do it is, are you looking to outsource to a third party mm-hmm. or are you actually looking for offshore employees where you can actually put your time and energy into and grow them yep. just like everybody else? Mm-hmm. Are you looking for that? Yep. Or are you looking for cheap resource you can just... Get, throw stuff at throw stuff at and yeah. get them to do it and they're not necessarily bought into your vision or your values or Correct. they're just they're you just might a not doer. Even know their name yeah like, okay because you know, yeah, yeah. the the organization might be so big mm-hmm. that you might just have the manager and that's all the person you deal with yep um so we have both and my preference is that we were all in one big team we knew everybody's names um and it was just we're talking about we you know bin that word outsource. Yep. It's just they're still our employees. They're just offshore. Yeah. We could have them in Hamilton, for example. We're in Auckland. Mm-hmm. It shouldn't be any different. Right. So how do you, how do you engage with people who are offshore though? I mean, it's a, it's a different dynamic, isn't it? I mean, it's a bit different. Yeah. I mean, I guess we've we've all got a bit used to it with with COVID and not necessarily working in the office day in yeah. day out. But there's still a different dynamic when you're actually dealing with offshore people, isn't there? There is a whole different dynamic. I think it starts with the employer. Yep. You've got to – so, what, I mean, we're learning every day. Mm-hmm. But one of the things we're doing is we're trying to do everything for them that we do here. Yep. So when a new employee starts with us, they get an induction pack. So we made sure that that got to the Philippines. Oh, nice. With a T-shirt and, you know, a bottle and all that sort of stuff. Yep. So they immediately buy in. Yes. And then when they're at home, they're washing their bottle or whatever, and then their families have bought in, right? Yep. Said, oh, my God, they gave you a bottle. Oh, you've got a uniform kind of, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so there's that. you gotta, you got to do as much as you can over there offshore that you do locally. Mm-hmm. And you're, you're that much closer. Yeah. And how do you uh, ensure you have regular meetings with these people as well? Like what, um, what's the sort of the meeting structure or how do you keep them engaged? Yeah, that's the toughest part. And I think that's why you need some sort of like middle management yep. locally. Mm-hmm. There's just no way I'd be able to give give someone offshore uh, as an employee that I needed to put time and energy into. I just don't have the time. Yep. So we, you have to have management here that has the time to do it. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's fair to ever hire anybody and not give them somebody who has a lot of time to teach them and train them. Yeah, we talk about the fact, you know, they need resources, they need technology, they need IT, but they actually need time more than anything else. Yeah. Um, I've been body, guilty yeah. of it myself, um, and, you know, in terms of employing assistants and then been so busy that I haven't had time to really yeah. show them the ropes, which is really unfair. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's worse when you hire people who are really good. Yeah. And, I mean, everyone's, I mean, really good. I mean, like, they cost a lot, right? Yeah. And then you say, oh, that person was crap or whatever. Like, did you even teach them anything or did you just assume because they were on six figures and, or oh, maybe sometimes even like 150, 160, 180K. Yep. And it could be like some project manager person. Mm-hmm. And then you say, oh, they were crap at their job. What did yeah. you teach them the way that you guys yeah. do? You know? the pro- back to the processes, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is the way we work around here. Yeah, That's yeah. what we kind of expect. This is what we're measuring you on. These are the right. outcomes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. Hey, so tell me, what's your, what kind of clients do you love to work with? What's your ideal client at Benico? For us, it's, it's all about um, – people who have enough problems for us to solve and mm-hmm. therefore they will see value in our services. So someone turning over roughly a million bucks um, has some staff, maybe five, five staff mm-hmm. um, and either in a, 
industry where they understand really well and they understand their business well enough. Yep. Um, and then they're not, they're not requiring us to build their business for them. Right. Yep. Like, so they need to be good. So at they've got an doing. established business that yeah. they know what they're doing, but they're, they're, okay. they're feeling a bit stuck or what, 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 why would they come to you? They don't have insights, for example. Yeah. They, um, they like reporting. Yes. Um, one of the main reasons in New Zealand why people move accountants is because they get tax surprises. <laughs> yes. Um, so they will <laughs> really? Get still to this day? Still to this day. Wow. <laughs> still to this day. Every time we have a new client meeting, it's like, why do you want to move? Like, One, two, three. Yeah. yeah definitely. Always uh, tax surprises. You would think with, you know, the likes of Zero and MYB online, the ability to look at your figures day in, day out, that there should yeah. be no surprises, surely. Well, that's that's exactly what customers say. Yeah. They say that to us and we're like, yeah, but that's even not even how we do it. Right. Like, do you really think I log into all my clients? <laughs> like, like, I don't, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, my team don't won't even do that unless there's a reason to go in. Mm -hmm. So we actually have a tax planning process, and we actually provide it as a separate service. If you right. don't have it, that's on you. Yep. Right. If, if, but we actually say we have it as a product or a service. Yep. And, and you can choose it. to have it. Yeah. 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 Okay. And really, as you said, it's about the data, isn't it? So it's, it's all very well having that stuff available to you, but really it's about producing reports in a timely manner that actually have the information that can help you to make the yep. right decisions about the business. Yep. And I think the problem with bookkeeping is yeah, they keep everything from a legal and governance point of view intact, but they're not mm. giving you the insights into what you can do with your business to you yeah, know, yeah. Well, make it better. Yeah, yeah. Or even just like bookkeeping, sometimes people think about it as just like data entry. Yep. And, and it can be, mm -hmm. but good book bookkeepers would actually go and see data as they're putting it in. Yep. And they would go, how do I give this business owner uh, insights with a static PDF or something? So if it's like a profit and loss, one of the good things we do is for every business, we will customize their chart of accounts. Yep. So they can see all their different new revenue streams, all their different cost of lines. Um, we might make up some codes, you know? <laughs> yeah. Like if someone might be spending a whole bunch of money on, I don't know, flowers. acoustics or flowers. It's like <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. flower, put a flower line in. Yeah. Who's, but bookkeepers and accountants can get really annoyed at going, oh, but that's not normal. You know, but it oh, shows trends, right? But who cares if it's not normal? Yeah. Just add a code. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's really funny. I mean, I'm, I'm not an accountant by any stretch of the imagination, but um, I have, I've have worked with the ICE house for many years and I've just done coaching for many years. And I remember when I first set up my kind of zero accounts, I did, I wanted every single line in there because I wanted to see what was actually going on. I want to know from an income point of view, yeah. where is the best, what well, not only what revenue is coming in, but also what's most profitable. Yeah. Um, and where are we spending the money and where are we kind of, you know, wasting money? I think that's really important. And yeah, yeah so... Yeah. I remember that. I saw, I saw clients that come in, the only line it would have was income. Income. That's the worst, eh? Like, what does that mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How do you know what is going yeah. on in your business yeah. or expenses? You know, the, the, I think there's five main categories that they would have in there. It's like, how can you tell like, yeah. when that goes really over budget? Well, what is it? Why yeah. is it going over budget? Yeah. 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 I think with, with zero and whatnot these days, you can add not just new codes, but you can have subcategories. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And you can then just sort of expand it out. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. ours has like annual recurring at the top, then yeah. monthly recurring, then one off and ad hoc. Mm. So we can see and we value each section separately mm. from a valuation perspective. Yep. So every month our report comes out, theoretically, we could value the company. Yep. Not many businesses can do that. Yeah. Because we got our reporting right. So yes. If we expect it for our own business, we try to give it to our clients. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's what the directors are really good at at Betico is knowing what's valuable mm -hmm. and going, we don't really care what you say. We're going to do it for you anyway. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. And we just, ah, don't worry. It's going to take another 15, 20 minutes, mate. Just like, just do it for Bear the with client. Us. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, the yeah. will love it and we'll work it out later, you know? Yeah. So it's like giving away a little bit so the client gets better insights and then better insights, they get us to do more, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So sometimes you just got to give a little bit away to get a lot more back yeah just to show them what's possible right yeah yeah okay and so you, you've talked about the three kind of main areas that you have so you've got the the business advice which is all kinds of things you know, mergers and acquisitions you tell me better than i, than I can what, what are you doing the business advice <laughs> yeah. side of things well mergers acquisitions um we do lots of business planning yep um we do like ad hoc coaching sessions we might do organizational reviews where we manage to figure out where all the people are and where they should be and uh, differentiate, differentiate where all the uh, departments and roles and responsibilities are. Mm -hmm. um, and then we might go into more sort of numbers advisory, which is like a budget or a forecast um, or a tax structure. Yep. Um, and then get into the more mundane type of accounting and tax type stuff, um, which for me is personally, a lot of it's not mundane. It, it, you can add value, like a lot of value. Mm -hmm. um, 
if you're giving you're using that information to give clarity to the client it just gives them confidence right yep. once things are clear they get confidence um, and then the final thing we do is bookkeeping um, but we try to attach again a finance process up front yeah so it's like we're not going to do your bookkeeping unless there's a pro process <laughs> yeah. yeah so we might do the finance process and then we'll add in some technology so yep um get all those foundations right and then we can do it mm -hmm. and then also if they want us to ever not do it we just give them the process nice yep. they can hire this person internally if they like that's fantastic actually that's one last thing i was going to ask you you mm -hmm. talked about um, we talked about marketing earlier and branding and whatnot so you've actually gone through both having an internal brand person or marketing person i should say mm -hmm. and then actually outsourced it and brought it back in house again what what are the, what's the difference between those two things for a business owner? Like, why would you recommend it's worth? When is it worthwhile having in house marketing, and when isn't it? I think it's always worthwhile having it internally. <laughs> okay, um, yeah. Personally, I, like if if you can afford it and it's big enough, and yeah, internally you just always. Well, it depends who you are. Like I've, I did marketing in uni, and I have a love for marketing. Yeah, me too. So naturally, <laughs> as a business owner, I want to do more marketing. So I want someone to bounce my ideas off. If yep. you hate marketing, yeah, maybe. Oh, maybe that's still a reason to have someone internally, right? <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. You, know, you can pass it off to them. Yeah, 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 yeah. you can pass it off to them. But yeah. um, if you probably need how you're going to grow that person, so yeah. they probably need a, an agency they can bounce their ideas off. I don't think it's fair to just let them at it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I th personally, I think in house is always the preference. Yep, you're just going to get better value for money, and your your business should be better off for it long term because the pe person will understand the business better. Yes. Um, I think that's not always the case when the business doesn't have so many variables. Like if, like our business has so many variables, mm -hmm. it's just dumb. Like that's why accountants can't scale their businesses. They're just bad at it. Yep. Um, because we have so many variables. But if you, I don't know, if you sold three tires and you're a tire shop, <laughs> you could outsource, outsource your marketing quite easily. Yes. Yeah. And you still do outsourced marketing, don't you? So you don't do it all in-house. You have um, helpers as well as your in-house marketing person. Yeah. And I guess that comes down to expertise, doesn't it? Or where it makes sense for somebody yeah. to be involved in it? Well, our particular case right now, it's not expertise, it's time. Right. But, okay. Um, yeah, because he's our marketing manager. He's our head of marketing. Yes. So he sets the strategy now Yep. Um, with our help. But we've previously had like lower level marketing internally mm -hmm. to manage the day-to-day. -day right. And had other agencies handle all the big stuff. Yes. So you can do it both ways. Yeah. But, yeah. Is there a preference? If you could do it anyway from the beginning, what would you do? Oh, all of it in-house. All would, of it in-house. Oh, really? Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I honestly <laughs> would. I, I so honestly, you, want a, you want a marketing um, accounting agency? <laughs> yeah. Well, I've thought about it many a time, <laughs> yeah, honestly, because yeah, yeah. all of our clients need marketing. Yes. We would very easily just open a better code marketing next door and we'd probably make more money. <laughs> than the accounting business. Yeah. Watch the space, shall we? Yeah. Stop watching. <laughs> okay, Vida. Hey, look, it's been really, really great to talk to you. If somebody wants to get in contact with you, what's the best way to get hold of you? Uh, Google Bedico Advisory or Bedico Accounting and Advisory. Yep. Um, you'll find us. So we'll have our different podcast channels. You'll find our Instagram, everything will come up there, Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, but good old fashioned. Just pick up the phone and call as soon as you Google my name or Google Bedico, you'll you'll get all the phone numbers and just call one of us. Fantastic. Hey look, thank you so much for coming in today and thanks for your time. Thanks for having me. My pleasure.